Hello friends. In this video we are going to learn how to build a simple servo motor controller circuit using integrated circuit 555. In this circuit, which is shown on your screens, a single integrated circuit 555 is used to generate the pulse width modulation signal to drive the servo motor. The circuit is powered with plus 6 volts on the left side, and the ground connection is 0 volts. Capacitor C1, which is 470 microfarad, is used to smooth the supply and prevent sudden fluctuations from disturbing the integrated circuit 555 and the servo motor. Next, we have P1, which is a 10 kilo ohm preset connected to pin 5 of the integrated circuit. Pin 5 is the control voltage pin of the integrated circuit 555. By adjusting P1, we change the voltage at this pin, which adjusts the pulse width of the pulse width modulation signal. The pulse width is what decides the exact position where the servo will move and hold. Capacitor C2, which is 100 nanofarad, is placed between pin 5 and ground. This helps to keep the control voltage stable while adjusting P1 and reduces noise. The timing network is formed by resistor R1 of 1 kilo ohm, resistor R2 of 100 kilo ohm, and capacitor C3 of 0.014 microfarad. These are connected in the normal astable configuration between pin 7, pin 6, pin 2, and ground. This network sets the base frequency of the pulse width modulation signal. For a servo motor, we need approximately 50 Hz, which makes the signal readable for the servo. The duty cycle, also called the on time of the pulse width modulation signal, is controlled by P1. Changing this on time is what makes the servo move forward or reverse. Capacitor C4, which is 0.1 microfarad, is connected between pin 8 and ground for decoupling. This removes high frequency noise from the power pin of the integrated circuit 555. The servo motor produces noise in the power line when moving. And without this capacitor, the integrated circuit 555 may generate unstable pulses. The output is taken from pin 3 of the integrated circuit 555, and this is connected to the yellow wire of the servo motor. The servo red wire is powered directly with plus 6 volts, and the black wire is connected to ground. The yellow signal wire receives the pulse width modulation output and tells the servo its movement. When the on time is about 1 millisecond, which is less than 1.5 milliseconds, the servo rotates fully in one direction. When the on time is about 2 milliseconds, which is more than 1.5 milliseconds, the servo rotates fully to the other side. With a pulse width of about 1.5 milliseconds, the servo remains at its center position. If the pulses are continuous, the servo holds its torque and position. If the pulses stop, the servo loses torque and relaxes. So to summarize, the integrated circuit 555 generates a stable signal of 50 Hz, and by adjusting P1, we vary the pulse width modulation width. This makes the servo rotate forward, reverse, or stop at any point between the two extremes. Capacitors C1, C2, and C for ensure supply and signal stability. Resistors R1, R2, and capacitor C3 set the base timing. This simple setup allows smooth manual control of the servo's position. Now, let's consider the version where push buttons are used to control the servo motor. Again, the integrated circuit 555 provides the pulse width modulation output. The servo signal wire is connected to pin 3, while its red wire takes the same plus 6 volt supply, and the black wire shares the common ground with the integrated circuit. Pin 5, which is the control voltage pin, is connected to a small network. This network uses resistor R4 of 10 kilo ohm connected to pin 5, along with a 1 kilo ohm preset connected to ground. This preset is used to adjust the idle center position of the servo motor. With no button pressed, pin 5 receives a middle voltage through this network, producing a pulse width close to 1.5 milliseconds, which keeps the servo arm centered. There are two push buttons, labeled forward and reverse. When the forward button is pressed, resistor R3 of 2.2 kilo ohms and resistor R5 of 1 kilo ohm pull the control voltage higher. This reduces the pulse width modulation to less than 1.5 milliseconds, rotating the servo to one side. When the reverse button is pressed, the voltage at the control pin is pulled lower through the preset path. 
This increases the pulse width modulation above 1.5 milliseconds, causing the servo to rotate to the opposite side. Capacitor C4 0.1 microfarad, connected from the top of R3 to ground, filters out noise and prevents jitter when no button is pressed. Another capacitor, C2 of 0.1 microfarad, from pin 5 to ground, provides additional stability. The main timing network remains the same. Resistor R1 of 1 kilo ohm, resistor R2 of 100 kilo ohm, and capacitor C3 of 0.014 microfarad, producing the required frequency of about 50 Hz. Here's the working sequence. With no button pressed, Pin 5 voltage comes from the preset and R4 keeping the servo in the center. With the forward button pressed, pin 5 voltage rises and the servo moves in one direction. With the reverse button pressed, pin 5 voltage falls and the servo moves the other way. On releasing both buttons, the preset voltage is restored and the servo returns to the center. This gives you simple manual control, moving the servo left or right with push buttons and automatically centering it when no button is pressed. And that concludes our explanation of simple servo motor controller circuits using Integrated Circuit 555. If you have any related questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to help. Thank you for watching.